This question asks you to create a multiple step income statement for ABC Inc. following IFRS. It's right now December 31st, 2000X5. And we're given income tax expense, 4,900, marketing expense, 17,000, sales expense, 22,700, administrative expense, 49,100, cost of goods sold, 75,600, and sales revenue of 189,000. So what do we do first? The very first thing we should do is categorize the accounts and determine whether they're expense accounts or revenue accounts. This is particularly important if we're given more accounts, asset, liability, and equity accounts. Categorizing is the first thing you should always do. So in this case, we know the income tax expense, marketing expense, sales expense, administrative expense, and cost of goods sold are all expenses. And sales revenue is the only revenue. In this case, because we've done the categorization, we can start creating the income statement. We would start with the company name, ABC Inc., then the name of the statement, income statement, and then either for the year ended, December 31st, 2000X5, or year ended, December 31st, 2000X5. Next, we're going to start with the revenue. In this case, sales revenue, 189,000. Note, it did ask us to create a multiple step income statement. So our next account should be cost of goods sold, 75,600. We're going to deduct the cost of goods sold from the sales revenue in order to create gross profit, $113,400. Remember, gross profit is the difference between the sales revenue and the cost of goods sold. Next, we would have a heading operating expenses. Those operating expenses would be all the expenses except for the income tax expense. So in this case, we would list sales expense, 22,700, marketing expense, 17,000, administrative expense, 49,100. Because there are multiple expenses, we would now need a subtotal. Total operating expenses, 88,800. Next, gross profit, 113,400 minus total operating expenses of 88,800 would equal income before income taxes, $24,600. What's next? We have to put in the income tax expense, $4,900. When we take the income before income taxes, 24,600 and deduct the income tax expense, $4,900, we get net income of $19,700. This is a basic multiple step income statement. Now, notice that in this listing of accounts, we got an account called cost of goods sold. That tells us that ABC Inc. uses the perpetual inventory system. But what would we get if the company used the periodic inventory system instead to account for their inventory transactions? In that case, we would get a listing of accounts such as freight in $2,500, purchases $77,900, purchase discounts $1,800, opening inventory $18,000, closing inventory $21,000. What would we have to do on the income statement if the company used the periodic inventory system and we received a list of accounts? To start, we would have the same titles. Start with the company name, ABC Inc., income statement, the name of the statement, and for the year ended December 31st, 2000X5. There's been no change between the perpetual and the periodic inventory system. Sales revenue would also show up exactly the same, 189,000. Then we would have a heading, cost of goods sold, but no total because we haven't calculated it yet. We would begin with opening inventory, 18,000. We would add in all of the purchases, 77,900, but we would deduct the purchase discounts, $1,800. We deduct it because the purchase discounts reduce the cost of purchasing the inventory. Our subtotal would be net purchases. So 18,000 plus 77,900 minus 1,800 is equal to $94,100. Next, 
we have to add in the cost of the freight because freight makes our inventory more expensive. So add freight in $2,500. This would give us total inventory available for sale, which would be the net purchases 94,100 plus the freight in of 2,500 for a total inventory available for sale of $96,600. Now, we have to deduct the closing inventory because the closing inventory is still sitting on the shelf. So total inventory available for sale, $96,600, less closing inventory of 21,000 is equal to cost of goods sold of $75,600. Does that look familiar? It's identical to the cost of goods sold under the perpetual inventory system, $75,600. So there's no change in the amount of cost of goods sold. Instead, what's happened is there's a difference in the way we calculate the cost of goods sold. Under the perpetual inventory system, cost of goods sold is simply an amount that's in an account on our general ledger called cost of goods sold. But for the periodic inventory system, we end up with a lot of different accounts on our general ledger, and we have to calculate the cost of goods sold. Because we have the cost of goods sold, we can now calculate the gross profit, 189000 for sales revenue minus the cost of goods sold of 75600 is gross profit equal to $113,400, exactly the same as it was under the perpetual inventory system. In fact, the remainder of the statement is identical. We would have the operating expenses, sales expense, marketing expense, administrative expense, total operating expenses, income before income tax, income tax expense, and net income, which would result in a net income, which would be identical under both methods, $19,700. As you can see, the only difference between a perpetual inventory system, which has a cost of goods sold account of 75,600, and a periodic inventory system, which has multiple accounts, including purchases, purchase discount, freight in, the result is the same, cost of goods sold 75,600. Hopefully, this has helped you to understand how to calculate the cost of goods sold when a company is using the periodic inventory system.